So we're about to watch a heads up match between uh, Jason Kuhn and uh, Ben Pollock. Uh, it's from a US Poker Open. We're uh, joining the action on the flop and it looks like uh, Ben made a min raise before the flop. Jason called uh, pretty standard uh, queens versus ace twos. Um, flop comes ace nine six uh, with a flush draw and uh, Kuhn decides to check call, which is pretty standard and so is Ben's uh, C bet. So on the turn, uh, another ace comes and uh, both players elect to check. Pretty standard by Kuhn to, to check that spot. He um, doesn't have that many strong hands, uh, so it wouldn't make sense for him to lead. And I think with Ben's hand with pocket queens in the spot, uh, once Kuhn check calls, it pretty much has either an ace, a nine, a six, or a flush draw. So with the check, I think Ben is trying to pot control a little bit. I think he's slightly worried that Kuhn might have an ace, and um, Queen's simply not that strong on, on, on this board anymore. And he can also induce some, some bluffs on the river. If Kuhn did have a flush draw and it breaks, uh, he's gonna bluff it on the river for sure. So let's see what the river brings. So the river comes an offsuit queen. And at this point, I think Jason's fairly confident that he has the best hand. Uh, with the stacks uh, the way they are, they have about 3x uh, pot stack ratio. And uh, Jason knows that if Pollock had a, a really good hand, a knotted hand, he's more likely to bet it on the turn uh, to try to build a pot and, and finish the match. He's uh, pretty confident that uh, Pollock is, is somewhat capped in his range, and uh, that's why you see this big bet from, from Jason, because um, he's obviously trying to get hero call. He's quite polarized in his range. He wouldn't do this with a nine, uh, so he's pretty much saying that he has an ace or uh, um, a missed flush draw at this point. I think when Ben sees this bet, he's uh, he also knows that Kuhn is like, pretty polarized, so I'm, I'm guessing he's pretty excited that he might have an ace and he's not going to be able to fold when both the flush draws break. Um, so he's just, you know, thinking about Vegas and the Mirage right now. <laughs> Jeez, wow. So this is a really <laughs> nasty spot for Jason. He's confused right now for sure because he would have expected Pollock to keep barreling the turn with uh, all of his knotted hands and you know, really strong hands. Um, but at the same time, it's a very uh, weird spot to bluff uh, in, in Pollock's shoes. See, Jason pretty much has the top of his range. If we look at the board, um, he really doesn't have that many uh, stronger hands. And, you know, like, it doesn't really matter if he has ace dues or ace seven. Um, but when, yeah, when players take this line that Ben just did, uh, it's usually a really strong one. And it makes a lot of sense that he has queens in the spot, uh, the way the hand played out. Fold. Uh, and he finds a fold. That's a really good fold. Heads up, that's tough. It's possible that the time bank yeah, had something to do with it. Usually when you're in a spot like that, you have your initial gut feeling of what to do. And then the more time you take, the more time you consider other options. And then you just keep going back and forth, back and forth until you finally make up your mind. So the more time you add, like the more thoughts pop up in your head and the more you can think about your opponent's range and, and where you are in your range and um, might sway your decision. So it's definitely possible, but. As you can see, he made the right decision at a limited time, so he, I'm guessing he went with his gut, and his gut said pull.